Good evening. Hello, Robinson Primary families. Welcome to Family Learning Night. I would like to go ahead and introduce myself. I am Missy Zacharias, the principal at the primary school. And uh, we have some very important information about how you can foster a growth mindset, grit in your child, um, have your child experience productive struggles, and a teaching self-control and delayed gratification. So we have a lot of information here tonight that's going to be great. I, I wanna start with a short video clip and after the video clip, we'll talk about some other things that you can do at home and some things that we like to foster here at the school. I you'll see a lot of things on that video or you'll hear a lot of things that said keep moving forward uh, success, failure is the key to success and those kinds of things those are the things that we think about when here at the primary school and we want them to have those failures so that they can learn from them and grow from them so that's kind of the key to our success so I want you to think about this question what do you think the key is to achieving our success or our goals what do you think the key is to achieving our success or our goals so that's a really big question so what do you think is what do you think is the most important thing for students to be able to achieve their goals and to be able to be successful students and to be able to be successful adults so um, we do a couple of things here but we talk about growth mindset and grit a lot you guys might have heard they're in the grit squad or we're working on their grit so there's two different kinds of mindsets so there's a growth mindset and there's a fixed mindset. When you're talking about a growth mindset and a fixed mindset, the fixed mindset is a student or you believe that your, your mindset is fixed. It's like an eye color. It doesn't change from whatever uh, it was. So you can't grow that. It's I'm bad at math, so I'll always be bad at math. Or I don't know how to turn the, or work the computer, so I'll always be not know how to work the computers because my mindset is fixed. But there's also a way that something that we really try to foster here and that's a growth mindset. That means that your brain is like a muscle. So it grows stronger as you train it. Just like if you would train your muscles, as you train your brain, you don't know it yet. So there's a very powerful word in that yet. So when the students say, I don't know, I don't know how to do this. That's great. You just add the word yet to that. Because if you don't know how to do it then, you can work on learning how to do it. And so that's what we try to explain to students, that you can grow yourself, you can grow your brain. Grit means if you're climbing a rock wall and it's really hard, you just go through it. Grit means to me when something is hard and you keep doing it, you're going to get it once and the very end. It's like when you're at recess and you're doing the monkey bars, but you don't get all the way through, and you try a couple of times, you're going to get all the way through. So how do you think you can uh, grow that growth mindset at home? Because that's what you want your student to do. So some of those, there's three pretty strong ways that you can do that. One of them is check your own mindset. Make sure that you are shown. It's kind of like that old saying, actions speak better more than words. So whatever your actions are, when you experience tough things, when you experience failure, what are, what are you doing when you experience those things? So that's very important that you uh, show how you can learn from those failures, you show how you tackle hard things, and those kinds of things. That's number one. Second one is praise the effort. This one is a super important one, and we've talked about this a lot with the teachers, is let's say if I praised you for being smart because you finished something really fast or quickly. So you finished something, I said, oh my gosh, you finished that so quick. That was so, you were, must be so smart. What message is that sending? So first of all, that's sending the message that 
quickly means I'm smart. So if I do it really fast, I'm smart, which means if I don't do it really fast, then I must not be smart. So when they tackle or when they see things that are really hard for them and they don't know how to do it right away, they think automatically they're what? Not smart. So it's very important that you praise the effort. So even if something comes easy to them, praise something about what they did with that. Like even if they drew a picture that was beautiful and you say, oh, you're such an artist, you're so smart at, at uh, drawing, you might say something more like, I see that you really took your time in this. This looks like you really put a lot of effort in it. Or I like the way that you're still working hard on those things. So praising the effort is super important. The third thing is to show how to learn from your failure. So when, just like in the video, when we saw at the very beginning, when you fail at something or something doesn't go the way you want it or planned, if you learn something from that, okay, so next time I know that I'm going to uh, do something different and this is what I'm going to do to see if it works better that way. And if you don't give up and you learn from your failures, you're teaching that to your student. So that's a really good way too. So if they didn't, think about uh, babies, think about riding bikes and babies, they learn to crawl, they fall a million times when they start learning to walk, they get right back up and they continue to go. So somewhere along the line, we stop that kind of growth mindset because babies have it. Think about how many times they fall and get back up. Think about how they have to learn everything to talk. So uh, we want to keep that going as the children get into school. And sometimes when they get into school, they start thinking that someone might be smarter than them or something like that. So that's why we really need to do those three things, to check your own mindset, to praise the effort, and to learn from your failure. Grit, what grit means to me is it means like doing stuff that even though that you think it's really hard, you just don't give up and you just keep doing it and you're telling yourself, I can do it and you're just being really confident in yourself. I think grit means that when something is really hard, you keep on trying. And like when something is hard to draw, uh, you can keep on trying until you get it. So another part of this night is we wanted to talk about the importance of letting your child experience a productive struggle. And you may have heard in the headlines or you may hear about helicopter parents or parents that are, that are carving a pathway for their, for their child to make it so easy for their child that they don't have to have that productive struggle. We all know that that doesn't work. When you take away that productive struggle, there's a couple of things that can happen, but one of the things that can happen when you take away that productive struggle and you remove all of the things that are in your child's way instead of letting them work through it, is you're showing them that they can't do it. So you're giving the cue, the cue I guess, that they cannot do whatever it is that, you, that they need to do to get themselves out or to get themselves through uh, troubles. So letting your child have that productive struggle is very important. So when they're struggling with something, say tying your shoes, don't do it for them. Let them struggle through it. If they don't want to uh, read through a word, let them struggle through it. Sometimes that's hard to do. Sometimes it's hard to let your child or watch them struggle through something, but it's so much more of a payoff when they see that they can do it. And if they stick with something and show that grit, they can work through their problems. And so, you know, in life, you're gonna have lots of those kind of problems come up. And if they can know now and learn now that they can work through their problems themselves and you have the confidence in them, and so you're telling them, I'm here to support you, what do you need help with? But you're not bailing them out. You're not giving them all of those things uh, to take those struggles away. So the protective struggle is very important um, to have, let them have those struggles and let them work through it do something hard it's like to me I doing I'm doing my best so I'm just like I'm not giving up is um is is something is when you do something but it's hard and you and you don't give on it and then you just do it anyway 
and you not give up. So we're also working very hard to teach social and emotional skills here and their well-being. So Mrs. Dunyon is going to share about the Character Strong curriculum and resources that we use here district-wide. Hi, my name is Allison Dungan, and I'm the school counselor at Robinson Primary School and Robinson Elementary School. I'm excited to talk to you tonight about social emotional learning and character development at Robinson Primary. In 2019, the state of Texas passed a series of bills that require schools to address the mental health and wellness of our students. You might have heard the term SEL or social emotional learning, but what does that really mean? Well, SEL can be defined as the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply the knowledge, skills, and attitudes to manage emotions and achieve personal and collective goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain supportive relationships, and make responsible and caring decisions. But how do we do that? Well, at Robinson ISD, we believe that it's our responsibility to educate the whole child in order for them to succeed in the classroom and beyond. For that reason, we have selected Character Strong as our district-wide social emotional curriculum. The Character Strong program consists of rich and thorough lessons that teach SEL and character side by side. You might hear things about self-awareness, self-management, social awareness and relationship skills, patience, honesty, selflessness. All of these components come together in the Character Strong curriculum that we use from kindergarten, even pre-K through 12th grade. So what does Character Strong look like on our campus? Well, every month we have a character trait that we focus on. Some of the character traits we've already learned about are things like respect, honesty, responsibility, perseverance, and gratitude. Looking forward for later in the year, we'll be talking about kindness, empathy, courage, cooperation, and creativity. These lessons are taught through monthly counselor lessons. I have the privilege of visiting every classroom in our building once a month to focus on these character traits through literature and classroom discussions and other activities provided in the Character Strong curriculum. In addition to my monthly lessons, teachers use the curriculum in their classrooms. Every classroom will set aside 10 to 15 minutes every day to focus on these traits because we realize how important they are to the development and growth of your child. And additionally, you've been receiving letters that have ideas and books and resources for you to continue their learning at home. We urge you and encourage you to continue the discussions about these things that you're hearing about at home. Also, on Class Dojo every month, I'm happy to post some pictures and definitions and, and additional resources for you to continue these conversations at home. I hope that you've learned a little bit about social emotional learning tonight, and we look forward to continuing to help nurture that side of your child in addition to the academics that is already being provided at our wonderful school. Self-control or delayed gratification is very important to teach and to foster in young children. Um, so I don't know if you know, there was a marshmallow experience that, uh, experiment that a doctor, I think it's Mickle did back in the 60s. And it gave very, very important information to uh, researchers and to people that self-control does play a really big role in how students do in school how students do in careers, and how students do in their relationships. And so the marshmallow experience, just to give you a quick rundown of what that was, is they put three and four year olds with the marshmallow in front of them and told them to wait. And if they waited, the, the person went out and came back, and if they waited the 15 minutes, then they were able to get two marshmallows. So there was, if you YouTube that, there's a lot of uh, good research on that, but it actually showed the ones that there's lots of research and they followed up with those, those kids that were three and four when they got older and they did. They did better in school. They had you know, better relationships in general and their, they had bigger careers and had better careers. So it does play a very significant role in how students do. And parents, if you research this also, parents and you play a very significant role in uh, teaching that to, to your children and to showing that to your children. And I know I've said several times, actions are better than words. So modeling that is super important. So there's uh, a, a, some ways for you to do that at home. And this is kind of the things that we do here at school. First of all, be role models. So show self-control. 
So, you know, if you have a budget, show that you have a budget. Or if you're waiting in line at the grocery store, show self-control. We're just going to stand here. We're going to wait. So that's a great way to foster that uh, self-control or delayed gratification. Have boundaries at home. Be warm and loving and, and all of that. But we also need strict boundaries. Kids and students and, and children at home need boundaries. They need to know what I can do and what I can't do. Give specific praise, uh, positive, you've probably heard positive reinforcement and specific praise. And when I say specific praise, I mean, if you see your student doing something that you really like, praise that specific thing. I really like the way you sat in your car and you read your book today. Or instead of just saying you were good today, give specific praise. What were they good at? They need to know what they were good at because they want, you want them to do that again over and over. So be very specific in your praise. Um, teach them to express their feelings in a healthy way. So when they cry or they have a big fit or you know in their grocery store, teach them in that moment, here's what are some ways, I know you're angry and it's okay to be angry or I know you're upset, it's okay to be upset, but how can you express that in a healthy way? So make sure that you show them how to do that in a healthy way and make sure you model that. So when you're angry or when you're upset, model of how, yes, I'm very angry, but here's why I'm angry and here's what I'm gonna do about it. Set routines. Students love routines. Kids love routines. Children love routines. So make sure you have some routines. Um, give opportunities for social development with other peers. So meeting at the park with friends or having friends over. It doesn't have to be for long periods of time, but just give them some social time to where they learn how to share back and forth and do those things. Um, if, the, if you also want to put them in sports or dance or some of those kinds of things, I mean, I'm thinking of church things where they have to stick to rules and they have to adapt to other people, um, that's a great way to teach that self-control because they have to wait their turn. They have to do the rules. They have to follow the rules. And so those are great ways if you put them in things like that where they can help, that can help them with, the, with um, self-control. Make controlled decisions. So sometimes they may get $3 from the tooth fairy or something like that and they go to a store. Well, do you want to save your money? or do you want to spend your money? If you want this big item, then you might want to save it. So teach your kids about that because they may want to save that money to have something bigger in the future. And talk to them about that. Don't just, you know, let them have a bigger goal or encourage a bigger goal instead of just spending it on something real quick. Um, make controlled decisions and set future perspectives. And the future perspective is that kind of, I'm working towards something in the future we want to go on a family vacation to New Mexico, but we all have to pitch in. So let's get, you know, maybe they're saving their money to be able to buy something there. So do you still have that goal? We want to go on a family vacation, but we, we need to do these certain things. And they know that there's a bigger thing out there than what they were just looking at in the toy store. Or there's a bigger thing out there than that piece of candy in the grocery store line. Play games with your child, um, and specifically games that maybe they will lose at, and that's okay. They can work through those when they lose, and then you can be there to help support them and give them the words that they can use if they, they do get upset for losing. So, so much in life is being able to control your speech, your emotions, your behavior. It's great to be able to teach your child that now and give them those strategies. Um, so that grit and that growth mindset, having the, uh, or experiencing a productive struggle, and then also, um, Get having, teaching them how to have self-control and delay that gratification.